Bilal Ismail and I come from Pakistan. Young people, particularly women and girls, are disproportionately affected by gender inequality and discriminatory social norm across the globe. Young people aged 10 to 24 represent over one quarter of the global population, but exercises limited autonomy over their own lives and their own bodies. There are over 60 million girls married before their 18th birthday. 16 million girls aged 15 to 29 giving birth every year. Every minute a young woman is newly infected with HIV. 21.6 million women and girls undergo unsafe abortions and 47,000 women die every year because of complications. Every year around 300 women, 300,000 women die because of pregnancy related complications and one mother die every two minutes and 99% of them are living in developing countries. Women who don't have access to reproductive health services are at a greater risk of death and health complications than women who do have access to reproductive health services. Girls under the age of 20 are, as, are twice as likely to die in childbirth than those in their 20s. Therefore, making sexual and reproductive health services accessible to young women and girls should no more be a political war front. It should be the utmost priority of all states through the declaration, because these states have committed to the right of life of every human being through the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Without making sexual and reproductive health services and choices available and accessible to women and girls, we cannot dream of eradicating poverty. Because to end poverty, we have to invest in each and every person of the world. And as the post-2015 development agenda is about universality, so by burdening half of the population with reproductive health issues, by limiting their access to reproductive health services, we are denying half of the world the right to live a decent and healthy life, a life of their choice. Religion, culture, and state sovereignty should no more be an excuse to deny women and girls access to sexual and reproductive health and rights. And we look forward to this declaration to be the driving force for the state to commit towards the accessibility of safe sexual and reproductive health services to all women and girls around the world. Research shows that 35% of the women worldwide have experienced either intimate partner violence or non-partner sexual violence in their lifetime. Globally, as many as 38% of murders of women are committed by the intimate partners. The social and economic cost of intimate partner violence and sexual violence are enormous and have ripple effects throughout the society. Therefore, the agenda of poverty eradication and development is incomplete without committing and taking actions to end violence against women and girls, without making the world a safe place for women and girls. We know that till date, many countries don't have laws and support systems against domestic abuse. And this declaration and the SDGs should drive us there. The world, I believe that the world does not lack resources to protect women from violence. It lacks political will. And the declaration should address and aspire the states to have the political will to stand for women with women. Another important area to emphasize is in the declaration is the participation of young women and girls in governance. Young women and girls, despite being vital stakeholders in driving the change, face discrimination in process of active decision making and, and accountability. They encounter multiple barriers, including gender, social and political barriers. A vacuum exists, a vacuum of young voices going unheard. The declaration should commit to create 
the states should commit through the declaration to create conducive environment and mechanisms which ensure that young women young people and girls are politically empowered they take part in governance at all level and their voices are heard in political decision making we are not voiceless we are silenced systematically and we want the declaration to ensure that young voices are heard and included in the decision making processes as an activist working at grassroots level for improving the lives of young women i strongly recommend that the language of the declaration should be strong it should keep young people especially women and girls in its center should become a driving force for developing a mechanism for holding states accountable and should keep financing for the goals on women empowerment and gender equality as priority the economic cost of inequalities is high there is evidence so we need to invest more in women girls and equality to eradicate poverty and achieve the goal of a decent developed and peaceful world in conclusion the sustainable development goals should speak to all people from all gender all ages cultures and ethnicity human rights and equality should be the larger framework of the declaration and should recognize young women and girls as partners in development thank you thank you uh, thank you